Hey everybody, this is Jorge from the Big Band Cut Podcast. I am here with Janae. Janae is a serial entrepreneur and she is on a mission to help 1 million entrepreneurs worldwide create $1 trillion for the global economy. To do so, she co-wrote The Startup Equation, a recently released book, and today we will discuss said book with her. Hey Janae, how you doing? Hey, thanks for having me on. No, it's, it's great to have you. So, um, so this book, the sort of equation. Um, what was the? Well, it's, you know, I kind of t said it already, but you know, what I'll ask you: What's the motivation behind writing the book? Uh, it really came out of a conversation that I had with uh, my co-author, who's also my husband, uh, Stephen Fisher. He and I are both serial entrepreneurs, and one of the things that we would talk about over, usually over a, a glass of wine, um, was how different we were as individuals when we started our businesses, but then also how different... Uh, needs or what the difference in needs were um, whenever we started our business and we realized as we were talking more and more that you know there was really no one resource out there that we could find that could really encompass all of those things no matter whether or not you're looking to start a SaaS platform or if you were just you know uh, say uh, a blogger trying to live around the world uh, in a different country every quarter and so what we did was we set out to do a little bit of research to figure out okay really what are these common elements no matter what it is that you're trying to build and uh, and so from that we created uh, the startup equation which is this flexible framework um, that also takes into account who you are as an entrepreneur, but then takes that and, and figures out what do you want to build? You know, are you a franchisee? Are you a lifestylist? Are you a social good doer who really is interested in the triple bottom line and really creating that sort of path, but allowing for it to be flexible so that it grows as you change as an entrepreneur and also as your business organically grows. Okay. And did you take any, you know, cause I, I mean, I saw the book and you know it's very very visual uh, it's very it's very good laid out actually I was I was I was I was um, you know because I was gonna ask you did you take any inspiration from other books um, you know regarding entrepreneurship oh absolutely so um, what we love is that this has sort of been coined as a startup Bible which is awesome and and we're humbled by that um, but we absolutely took things that we know work, right? So we took um, and reference a lot of Steve Blank's material. Uh, of course, we bring in uh, the lean, lean methodologies because building leanly, I mean, that particularly in a, in a world that is as fast as uh, we're living today, being able to, to build something, but to build in a very agile fashion is, is definitely needed. So we took all of those elements, incorporated those in, paid homage to those who um, who really are, are, you know, are pointing people in the right direction, but sort of group them together along with um, over 140 infographics, over 40, inter uh, 40 interviews with different entrepreneurs from around the world, um, and then pull together our own tools and uh, frameworks so that people really had a, a visual step-by-step, -step, almost like choose your own adventure guide to starting and growing a business. Okay. And and uh, the the goal? How did the goal come about? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we looked at, um, listen, uh, by twenty twenty, one in six people are going to be an entrepreneur, yeah. just by um, just by these forces of change that we're seeing, and that's something that we dive into in the beginning of the book because of not only the way that we work, but also the way that we live are going to change and are changing. Um, that also means that one in six people will be an entrepreneur by necessity. And so as we looked at that, we said, okay, what's a small sliver of that that could really be sort of in an impactful goal for us, uh, but is also sort of big and hairy and audacious. And uh, so we said, all right, you know what? One million seems like a really good number to go after. So, um, yeah. So that's our goal. Awesome. And why? Why the the startup equation? Why the name startup equation? Oh, yeah. You know, the book when we first started working on it and started researching it, um, 
the book was actually going to be called, I think, Startup Economy, if I, if I remember our proposal correctly. And what we found was, because we didn't have the equation yet, that really came out of, um, I mean, that just came out of about uh, almost two years of research. It wasn't until we started to synthesize uh, all of our data and all of our research and beginning and began to find those patterns that we realized, wait a minute, there's an equation that we could put together or a flexible framework that we could put together that allows people to almost plug and play. So that's how the equation came about. And that's also how um, the uh, the first ever startup periodic table of elements came yeah. about as well. So um, it, it really is sort of a choose your own uh, it, adventure or formula for uh, your personal success. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that last one, the periodic table one. Because there's a, um, I've used one uh, previously, but uh, it's called the strategic, the strategic table of, of elements. It's basically the periodic table to use for, you know, to, to contemplating strategy and contemplating stuff that's going on, and you know, and you know, using those things to as a lens to look through things. And you know, usually people don't look at these things this way, but it's like I, I thought it was interesting. I, I took that from uh, the chief strategy officer from Adobe. So I was going to ask you about that. If, if that was there was a connection there or you just came up with it yourself <laughs> well I mean there's so we've actually we've absolutely seen that and we, there's a few you know periodic table of elements out there depending on what the content is or or what the um, what the topic is but what we found was that there wasn't really anything out there for startups and okay. so uh, we found that as we were putting together this formula what a great way um, what a great tool to be able to then, you know, even if you had almost like this board in front of you and you wanted to visually display it out for yourself, what a better way to do that than with a periodic table of elements. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned a few minutes ago about the, the forces of change. Yeah. Uh, I, I get asked about that a lot. <laughs> and, you know, what are those forces of change? Well, what do you, I'll, I'll put the question back on to you. So what do you normally tell people when, uh, when they ask you? Well, number one is tech. Um, so the adoption of tech. Um, <laughs> one thing, the adoption of tech. The other thing is understanding what the tech is. You know, you could do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, a lot of people do not understand what to do with it. They're just adopting it because they see the guy next door doing it. Right. And, and it doesn't. Uh, that doesn't really fit their their model or what they want to do. Um, other things have you know obviously have to do with uh, demographics. So millennials use technology completely different, um, <laughs> or even the the generations behind us, are, are, they they were born with the internet in their hands. <laughs> we adopted the internet. We got it. Like we we were born into it. But these people are you know right behind us, and you know you know I kind of touch upon those, and also the fact that you mentioned it. You know a lot of people are becoming are going to have to become entrepreneurs, uh, not by not by choice, but because of just 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 that's the way it's, it's, it's being laid out right now. Um, and the other thing is that, uh, I, don't, I don't remember you, you touching this on there, but uh, the whole thing about AI <laughs> replacing jobs, I mean, it's already happening, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to accelerate you know, dramatically. People will not feel that until it happens. So those are kind of like the, the things that I laid out for people. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So um, when we looked at um, when we looked at sort of the the macro trends that are changing what we know, you know, particularly from the industrial revolution um, into now what you know we've sort of coined as the informational revolution, which I don't necessarily um, I, I still think that's we're we're in it still. So I really think that that's going to continue to change. Um, and I'm not necessarily sure that that's going to be the name that in the future we uh, we all end up landing on. But um, you know, when we looked at these shifts, what we noticed is that uh, there were power trends that really were wielding their their forces um, and were changing the future of business. And so the ones that we have outlined were what we call sort of the anywhere liquid workforce. And you know, and you, you probably know this from personal experience, where and how we work is just changing mm -hmm. and really understanding what that looks like and um, and 
how technology is is affecting that. There's also the new work order, and uh, you know this was um, this is about being connected and collaborating in creative. You know, no one stays at a place for 25 years and works there any longer. You know, it's it's really more about having the portfolio career um, and really having companies slash clients that make sense for who you are at that time. Uh, there's also, and this is something that you just touched on, you know, the uh, connected and engaged consumer. You know, between Yelp and Facebook and Google, you know, people are more than happy to tell us what they think and to be involved in almost like this co-creation with brands. Um, we also have the era of the maker. You know, no longer do you need a factory when all you need is a 3D printer. Uh, and then we have the sharing economy, which we're seeing with Uber and with Airbnb. People don't want to own stuff anymore, but they still want that access. And then the last one is around the new creative economy. At the end of the day, uh, all industries are really built of these creatives. And this also includes um, local economies. They're really built upon the creatives that live within there. So how can we leverage them and look at them as a new category of worker and entrepreneur? Okay. You know, it's, uh, it's funny because I, um, the, just last week I, I, I gave a speech at a conference and I talked about the, the future of collaboration from my point of view is a you know personal personal experience and i i used to uh run an agency my own agency but then i i decided that model was not for me <laughs> but, uh, you know so i had to i had to reinvent not because i didn't want to do it it's because i thought you know this model sucks i mean it's kind of like going at the you know at the it's it, we're just i mean it, i didn't it didn't make sense to me and i used to have an office too a physical office with with, with people in there and you know, paying for the office, I was like, I mean, this is, I mean, this is not supposed to wait. I mean, it, 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 it could be this way, but I didn't, I, it didn't make sense to me to keep doing it. So yeah. I decided to, to F everything, <laughs> reset. And I said, my model now is going to be like a, like a movie production. So, so basically it's like, you know, the, act, the actors are never the same. The drama is never the same. You make up, you make it up. I mean, you, you got to create that when I have an engagement or anything like that. So I just bring in the people. But people from my network that I, that I connected through on Twitter, you know, ironically, and uh, and that's kind of like the model that I use now. Now I have I work from my home office or from anywhere I have an interconnection, <laughs> and that's how it goes. A lot of people think it's nuts when I said, you know, f f the, f the office, f that. <laughs> I mean, and I said, you know, let's let's restart. <laughs> yeah. Let's restart. But. Well, uh, and it's, that's the perfect example, right? I mean, you don't, who needs a, you're not in a place, meaning the job or the, the business that you have, right, isn't, isn't one that necessarily needs a brick and mortar. You know, you need flexibility. You need to be able to travel. So say that your clients are around the world or, you know, maybe they're even, even if they are close or regional, who needs that office if a lot of the workforce isn't necessarily local with you? So, uh, you know, kudos to you because it's not, it's something that a lot of people have trouble moving from yes. if they haven't already. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, none of my companies have been like, you have to sit in one place. I mean, I, I don't know. I've been doing this since 2008. Um, uh, no, sorry, 2006. <laughs> Not too <laughs> but you know, um, <laughs> but it's one of those things. If you don't need it, why have it? There's always a co-working space if you need to go and meet and, and have a meeting somewhere. Yeah, no, it's it's funny. Even and in, in, in you are in Boston, right? So you are in like Silicon Valley plus two, or <laughs> however people look at it. <laughs> um, and I'm in, in in Tijuana, right across the border from San Diego. So down here, I mean. I always tell people, listen, I'm the most radical guy in Tijuana <laughs> because I, I do not fit with the culture. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say, you know, the F that and that and I just restart and other people are like, God damn, like loss aversion, right? That's how it goes. And I have buddies from, because I've been in Tijuana, I've been been part of the economic develop, development here for the past almost four years now. And, you know, trying to get this mindset into the people and it's very, very hard even from, from young people that have, you know, kind of like I've taken under my wing, they still see it as like, I mean, this is too damn crazy. Like, 
we need a freaking office. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't need a freaking office. I mean, there's co-working spaces. I mean, and the co-working space where I used to have my office, it was it was geared towards the the higher premium companies. So like Google was in there. And I was like, the other companies that were there, I used to talk to them and I'm like, you guys, you don't need this office. I mean, <laughs> you don't understand what's going on. I mean, this is a co-working space. It's not a place where you just sit every freaking day. <laughs> you can come in, shift, you know, that's how it works, but people don't look at it. With, it's, it's, a, it's a little slower, but uh, eventually people will get it. <laughs> okay, you, you have to be the change that people want to see. So, you know, you keep, you keep showing them the way and they'll eventually come around. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, because you you are an entrepreneur and you've been been around you know been been doing this for a while. Yeah. Um, how do you get people to to recognize the change and then what they got to do? Mm. That's that's the hardest one. But I mean, you should you should be able to <laughs> have some examples. Yeah, you know it's uh, it, and it's more than just business, right? It's yeah. really around when a person is ready for change or is open to change and. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, if they have their own business or, you know, even if it's a family member, right? It's, uh, you have to be there and be willing to, um, to instill or, you know, share knowledge when people are open to it. But that conscious choice to be open to it is really um, the responsibility of that, you know, that recipient alone and there's nothing that you can really do about it besides try to encourage them show them by example um, show them examples and then um, you know and then try to walk them step by step or at least hold their hand through the process a lot of the times people are afraid to make change because of the fact that they feel like they're alone and they feel like you know if they head down this road they're going to be doing it all by themselves and it's uncharted territory so they just don't want to do it and i noticed this um so my first company was uh, a women's organization i started it by accident by the way i didn't i didn't mean to to, <laughs> to do what i ended up doing but such is life um yeah. <laughs> uh, so we had chapters we had about 55 chapters in seven countries and i noticed that a lot of my women were afraid to make change because of the fact that they didn't have a support system to be there almost like a net and catch them. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to, we tried very hard to be that digital net or that virtual net rather uh, for these people so that they really felt um, embraced as they started to make change. And um, I think that's just a lot of what people need to know. They need to know that they're not alone. They need to know that you're there with them every step of the way and um, and that it's okay to fail. You know, we as a global culture, um, we do not, um, we do not uh, consider failure a success, nor do we celebrate it. And mm -hmm. if that's something that we can change, I find that more people will be, uh, will be a little less risk adverse and a little more, um, a little more open to, to try to change the world and uh, and make some bold uh, bold statements, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, my God, we can talk about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know that stuff came into my head. Uh, but I, we got to talk about the book now. The the <laughs> whatever you want, by the way. We don't have. To, I mean, you know, the, uh, I, I'm game. This is this is all this is all good stuff. So uh, well, I'll just I'll, I'll just give you a little bit because <laughs> as you know, last week I was, I have, I have friends who, who, who like to, you know, pass on their friends who are entrepreneurial to talk to me because I am one of those rare people who have no fear. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't, don't have a fear bug in me. It's like, you know, I'll just learn something. And I don't care. It's like, I was telling, uh, you know, precisely on that conference last, last week or the other week, I told a lady, listen, the attitude is necessary because they were asking me about, about the support system if I had any. I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, uh, no. I mean, I was like, no, no, not really. I was like kind of thinking about it. No, not really. I mean, I, I said I serve as a support system to other people, not for myself. I, I mean, and that's, I know I like I'm a buffer, but uh, it's, it, it's different. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of odd in that way. But basically, I told her, listen, 
um, if you you have to you have to make peace with the fact that you may fail, uh, but that's an expectation you have to get into your head, and 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 most likely it will happen. If you're doing something out of the honor, it's most likely it will happen. But you have to take it as a learning experience. So anytime I said, if you challenge me to to learn a ukulele to you know tomorrow by tomorrow, and I said it's kind of eight o'clock already at night. So you know what? I'm gonna take you up on that challenge, and I'm gonna tell you, okay, by by maybe noon tomorrow, maybe noon tomorrow, I know what the hell a ukulele is, <laughs> because I will I will take the time to 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 call people up even if it's midnight that I know in my network who are musicians to tell me stuff about that. And maybe by by the next week, I'll you know make some meetings with them to you know teach me how to use a ukulele. I'm not going to be an expert at ukulele, but I can tell you that I will learn to at least play a tune. <laughs> and and that's and I said that's the attitude that's needed. Um, you know you will not get it right, but you got to make the effort. And as long as there's the effort and the attitude, I mean I mean listen, the, the, that's your own that's your own personal support system. <laughs> you, you will run through walls just to, to do anything, um, but that's it. And th there's nothing to it. And you, you said, and I said the biggest one here is you gotta give a F what everybody thinks. I mean, <laughs> you don't, I mean, this is, you are doing it on your own and there's, there's other people around you. Like I said, you know, a community around you, that's great. He said, you got stuff to share and then to learn about, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you gotta do it. You're just gonna push, push, go and, you know, grip button and let it go. <laughs> No, for sure. You know, and you bring up a, a great point. It, a lot of the times people are afraid to admit that they're, um, you know, either they have no knowledge or they, or they're nascent at, nascent at, um, say a skill or, you know, around a, a certain piece of, um, you know, it could be a skill or a tool or, um, or some type of technique. So people are afraid to reach out and ask for that help from people who have mastered um, that um, that skill or that tool. And we just have to allow ourselves to be a little more curious, to yeah. be a little more childlike, and to get rid of our assumptions, and to get rid of our ego, and allow yeah. ourselves to be sort of explorers of the world. I mean, that's really where, um, when we think about innovation and about changing the game, I mean, that's really where that comes from. It's about yeah. not necessarily thinking, oh, okay, so this is a Sharpie, and I know the functionality of this Sharpie. No, it's about looking at this Sharpie and saying, okay, what are the hundred different ways besides as a writing implement that I can use this or reimagine what this is? And you can't go there unless if you let go of your preconceived notions and okay. just really become... Uh, like a child and have eyes open. Yeah, you know, a big one for me was uh, mentors. Mm -hmm. So, 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 I, all my mentors I've met through Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. and I, that that's like a first one, I think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously, I, I, I had their interaction with them previously, but then as I started, you know, they started interacting with me. I, I went to them. I said, I'd like you to mentor me in this because and they were like what the f like like didn't couldn't believe it and i said yeah because you have this this and that and i think you could you know you know open that little door for me or that view of how you've done it and more mo you know the, the mentors i've had are are renegades um or they were renegades in their time and they still are even though they're you know past their work life if, if you want to call it that they're still trying to do stuff and i find that intriguing because they're still I mean, they're still got their minds like a little kid, and that's that's what I you know wanted because it's like you know you understand where where I'm coming from, um, <laughs> and then you get that. And I don't think a lot of people know how to pick their mentors. I mean, they just pick um, you know whoever's popular. <laughs> I don't know what what do you what do you what do you what do you think uh, about that? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a really great point. Um, you know, I so I'm how can I put this? I'm a little more. No, I mean, not more organic than, than it seems like you are. Um, I find that a lot of people really just jump on whatever bandwagon they see other people jumping on. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of reasons why. So when we see, uh, let's just take these, you know, um, these online, you know, I will teach you how to be in, you know, make $100,000 online and start an online business. 
um, and I'll give you a framework to do it. Yeah, okay, there are some things you can learn, but people think, oh, if I do this, I'm going to end up just like what I see yeah. this person or just how I see this person has ended up. And so they try to, you know, um, maybe they buy into it and have, and sort of idolize that person or they ask them to be a mentor. Um, what I try to do is I find that life will end up presenting mentors to me. And I'm, I really just try to be open to when that occurs and, you know, I know, I know what I know. And I also know that there's a whole lot of stuff that I don't know. So, no. um, and mentors come in, in many shapes and sizes. So to me, a mentor can be older a mentor could be someone who's younger, who just has um, a different knowledge base, you know? Um, and whenever life sort of presents those people in my life, I try to take in as much as possible, but also build a relationship with them. Because I also find that, and I don't know what your thoughts are on this, I find that there are times when a person comes into your life and they may start out as a mentor, but then they usually evolve into more like a friend. And then there are times where the roles then get reversed and you're teaching them something and, um, and you end up being a mentor to them. And that was never yeah. the intention. So no. um, it's all a journey, such as life. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the way it's happened to me is, is um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, a little less organic than you are. I'm more of a, you know, I like to speed things up. <laughs> and uh, so I said, let's do some of my weaknesses. Um, you can help me with that, deal with those, you know, surpass those, make them a strength. Um, how do you do that, right? How, how do you, you know, see the situation, how you dealt with that? And, but my mentors, um, yes, they've, they, they were, at the, the, when I initially, you know, went, go to, went to them, um, they all said the same thing. Listen, I got more to learn from you than you, you from me. And I said, well, then that's why it's going to work then, because there's, there's an, you know, there's an exchange here. <laughs> yeah. it's, if, it's, it's, if it's only one way, I mean, it's kind of like boring, right? But I also want to know that I can, you know, there's something there. And yes, they become my friends um, more than my mentors. It's, you know, it's not like, I mean, when people think we talk about mentors, they think we talk, we talk to them every day. It's not like that. It's, you know, <laughs> it's yeah, not really like that. It's not a relationship. Yeah, yeah. But um. But I think, you know, I always make the point to people because I, I, I get I get seek for mentorship myself. And I can tell you I have to reject some people because I know I don't really know why they're choosing me. And I said and I asked them, listen, what exactly do you want from me? Because we have to be clear on that. If you're just going to me because, you know, it could be fun or <laughs> it could be, you know, I mean, you know, it, you need to be clear about those things, your expectations, all that stuff. And it's not about complicating the stuff. It's really about. Uh, making you know making the value evident that I can help you and and it's happened to me where I've been not been able to help somebody and you get in my case I get like bummed out because it's like goddamn you know <laughs> I don't I don't like leaving you know I take it very personal myself so yeah. but that's that's how it is <laughs> yeah that's you know I, I appreciate the fact that you say no to people as well I think that entrepreneurs um, I don't want to say in particular, but I, I know many entrepreneurs have trouble saying no. And um, it's a word that we need to get really good at. And the reason why I say that is, you know, our time is money. And yeah. we have to decide, and it's our it's our decision to make, but we all have to decide on where where we spend our time and yeah. really understand that for every hour that you spend somewhere else though it may be fruitful and that's cool if it is and it's something that there's reciprocity and you're getting something out of it and it feels good um you know every hour that isn't spent in a way that you want to spend it and you're just doing it out of obligation i mean you're spending away from your business or away from your family or away from the life that you're really trying to create and so we really need to take a hard look at where we spend our time and realize every hour has a dollar sign to it. You just decide on what your hourly rate is. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it is true. And you know, just, just last week, a very good friend of mine, he, he put the question right in my face. He's like, cause he's, he's, I'm mentoring him. Um, he's like, 
what, why don't you, you know, set up an incubator? And I'm like, I oh, man, I'm like, dude, <laughs> you know what that means? <laughs> no, I don't know. And I said, well, but you do. I'm like, yes, I do. And I've worked with incubators before. That's why I'm not in that, in that position to do that because I know the time required to make it happen. Yeah. A lot of, I said a lot of incubators just are just setting up because of the fear of missing out. <laughs> but the, the actual value that's imparted to other people, I have questions about that. I mean, I've, I've, I've had the experience of incubating startups in my office when I used to have it and then helping them raise funds. And I said, there's a lot of incubators. They don't even get them to that. <laughs> um, so, I mean, and I, and I said, I understand your question, but I mean, the time, I'm not there yet. I need to do other stuff before I do, you know, get to that point, even think about it because it's insane. It's just, it's, it's a completely different world. And I see, I see, I see challenges that could be resolved, but at the same time, that's not my battle right now. And he was, and that's that. That's the way you got to do with these things. I mean, there's battles to be fought, and some battles not yet are not there to be fought at the time for you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, what are your questions? Now, going back to the book, because we're kind of digressing. Um, <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think yeah, whoever listens to this is uh, entrepreneur. They'll get a lot of a lot of insight from it. Now, the the process, because um, it's very visual. And, and I, I wanted to, uh, you know, make that clear that I was a fan of that uh, to you. Yes. Um, Glad to hear that. There's, there's, um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on people taking the process or the templates in the wrong way? You kind of talked about it before, a little bit before when they think, oh, if I use this template, then so-and-so is going to happen. So how do you explain to people that following the, the, the template or the process is not necessarily going to end up in the, you know, the trillion dollars <laughs> outcome that everybody's, you know, wishing happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what we talk about in the book is uh, the fact that you have to do a ton of testing and, um, and not, again, build the bike while you ride it. It's a, you know, really using a lot of that mean, that lean methodology in everything that you end up doing. Um, so what we do is that there are exercises within each chapter which allow people to figure out, all right, so let's just take sales. So, okay, so this is what my sales funnel looks like. These are my marketing act activities. This is really the metric that I'm looking to drive. You know, how do I bring people through that funnel and what are the ways in which I'm going to test that? So um, we want people to, uh, to take the exercises and activities and templates that we've put together um, to help them figure out what's working, what's not. But it's a lot of testing. And that's what, um, you know, if we, one of the things that we really try to establish is if you're not really working on the business and testing each piece of it, you're not going to know what works. And so building something that's big and sexy doesn't necessarily drive customers or happy customers. So um, getting customers involved as early on as possible, you know, building um, your own um, COV or, or uh, VOC rather, uh, voice of customer program so that they can give you feedback. Much like, again, the lean methodology allow for customers to give you feedback early on. They will become your evangelist, but they'll also help you decide on where's the right place to spend money so that not only you can start, but then you can grow and ultimately scale. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am a big, big proponent of experimentation. I just tell people, listen, if you're not experimenting, you are not doing absolutely nothing um <laughs> it's, it's i mean it's like you know don't don't even mumbo jumbo with the stuff i mean if you're not actively testing things out you know and deliberately creating mistakes <laughs> i mean because that's really what it is when you're experimenting you are looking out for mis new mistakes not the same mistakes and you have to learn from those and those are the better insights um now what are your thoughts on because this is a big one at least for me, the, the, you know, and, and my background was not, never had to do with, you know, with following uh, steps. I've always went more, more towards the in, in, instincts, <laughs> instincts driven, you know, kind of immersing myself in something and just kind of feeling something and, and, 
making decisions based on observations and data and whatever recollections I get insights. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, my thing with the, with those whole things about the lean startup and these things, these processes are that it makes people immune to their own instincts. Um, kind of, it kind of cancels them out because they're looking out for what people tell them to do. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I would disagree, but, but you know, I also think it depends on the person, right? So, yeah. and how in tune they are to their instincts. So, you know, when we talk about uh, experimentation, or uh, so we have a seed board or baseboard in there, and we have a seed board, but the baseboard really helps um, and builds upon sort of. Uh, validation you know at the end of the day you're going to have an, a, a hypothesis or you're going to have multiple hopefully and that really comes from particularly your initial ones I mean that really comes from your instinct and your gut and that can be anything from who your customer is until you actually validate that that is your customer because you may find you know say that you think your customer uh, is a 20 something year old, um, you know, we'll just say like a 21 year old male and then you go out and you do some customer research and you actually find, uh, well no, it's actually a 27 year old, someone who's already out of school and has a little more disposable income. You were close and your instincts were close, but um, you know, it was something that was a little more, um, the market had a little more money depending on what that product or service was. So I think you're going to start always with your instincts, even if you're not in tune with yeah. that, listen to that gut. Um, but it always starts from there, but that's really where you test from or, um, you know, say that you've already done some testing and then you go, okay, so this is my gut told me this, we found out X, and now from there, we're refining um, what the next hypothesis is and or what our hypotheses are going to be. And then we're going to test from there. But at the end of the day, I really do think it always starts with your gut because it has to start from somewhere. Yeah, no, no. I'm, and, and I'm not saying I don't I don't pay attention to what people say. <laughs> no, I mean, you have to listen to it, but you also have to, you know, have the, the, the presence of mind to say, Okay, this is their up their opinion, <laughs> but what are their actions? <laughs> um, and that's why I tell people: listen, don't don't take what people tell you as a given. You look at what they do, um, and that tells you tells you more because people are, you know, sometimes if I've always said, listen, if if and, and this is, has to do more with the bigger companies. If if you're asking your customers what they need, they'll tell you what they need right now in five days, not what they'll need in, in next year or in two years or in three years. <laughs> that's that's where you have to jump and it's very difficult the other question I wanted I wanted to ask you was it, because this has to do with even in my own experience um, you know so so lean startup when they start the lean startup or whatever methodology people use I always make the point that they don't have a strategy <laughs> and maybe maybe when maybe when you're starting up you're not supposed to have a strategy from my point of view you should <laughs> you should have a, some resemblance of thinking about things not necessarily thinking no this is gonna how it's supposed to turn out you have to figure it out but i see a lot of a lot of startups do not having a strategy they rely too much on the process of figuring out the market fit what are your thoughts about that um so i just want to make sure that i understand the question so are you asking whether or not i see a lot of startups not have a strategy or are you asking whether or not you think there's strategy within uh, the lean methodology no. uh both <laughs> <laughs> um okay so let's see i will find i will say that i will find that many startups many first-time entrepreneurs you know, people that have not done it before, that have not made uh, the rookie mistakes, that yeah. have not, um, you know, maybe lost a few thousand dollars or spent countless hours uh, going up the wrong hill um, or pushing the, the wrong boulder up the wrong hill. Um, I find that those are the ones that are less likely to have a strategy. Now that's not all of them, but they're less likely to have a strategy. Um, I will then say that uh, for the lean methodology, you know, to build an MVP of either your product or your service, or even if you're building, say, an MVP of your market 
of um, your your marketing plan. To me, that's a strategy. You're you're saying, all right, I think this is what um, the core or the bare bones or the framework is, and we're going to test whether or not that that works, and we're going to test over, you know, say if we're doing it. Um, if we're doing it in say agile sprints, then that would be like a two week sprint. Um, to me, that's a strategy uh, because you're going to, you're figuring out what the core of that is, testing that out first before you build upon that. And um, you know, so I think that there is strategy in, um, you know, in the lean methodology, however, it's a methodology and you have to put the strategy to it yeah. and you have to know, or an entrepreneur has to know how to put strategy to it. And I think that just really comes with experience and it comes with knowledge and, um, or it comes with actually reaching out to mentors or buying this book yeah. <laughs> to help. <laughs> but you know, you don't know what you don't know sometimes. So, <laughs> You know, there's there's also some of that that goes on. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, the the. I mean, we can go on and on with this topic. I love it's it. Insane. <laughs> it's ins it's insane. Um, you know, so we, I think we kind of talked about it, but let's in your own words, why should people care about your book? Oh well, y you know, there's a few reasons. One, because again, if by 2020, one in six people are going to be an entrepreneur, and over 50% of the population has vision as their number one sense, well, here's a choose your own visual guide to help you figure out who you are as an entrepreneur, what it is that you want to build, and then how you start to craft that startup path for you. And we walk you step by step on how to do that, but then also when things aren't necessarily working, all right, how do you retool it? And um, and again, I mean, we saw this in an Amazon review, and I'm, I'm really grateful. I mean, someone called it a startup Bible because it brings all of the great components and thinking that's gone on over the past you know, 25, 30 years uh, into one visual guide. To me, that's pretty cool. So if that doesn't sell it, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> go check it out. <laughs> now, I think this is another question. It's, yeah. a, it's a big one because you, you kind of touched, you touched the powder right now. Okay. So one in six people become entrepreneurs within four or five years from now. Um, <clears throat> now, are, is everyone an entrepreneur from your point of view? No. Yeah, no, unfortunately not. Um, and the reason why I say that is because there are, or I let let me rephrase my answer. Um, they are not naturally entrepreneurial. Um, so, you know, being an entrepreneur out of necessity is very different from mm -hmm. having, yeah, having you know specific skills and traits. That are more um, that are more aligned with an entrepreneurial spirit, right? Um, and so, not everyone is inclined to be an entrepreneur or has the stomach for the risk that occurs, or is needed to be an entrepreneur, um, or is willing to deal with ambiguity because that also is part of um, of being an entrepreneur. So, not everyone's built that way because at the end of the day. We're all unique snowflakes. Yeah, oh, I like that one. <laughs> no, no, you know, it's it's. I I um. You mentioned that I have that you know. That you know, you know, kind of odd thing to say to know how to say no. I've you know in mentoring people, I've actually told them, listen, you are not an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> not as I'm not trying to be you know, you know, sound harsh or whatever. But listen, whoever tells you honestly. And gives you reasons why it'll open your door and from there you can start making a change if you want to take it yeah. but now you know what you're up against because these are the habits that you need to have and the attitude necessary to you know to 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 surmount the obstacles and the ups and downs because this is this is a I always tell people listen this is like a roller coaster this is a, this is a freaking race and you are racing against yourself against everything that you want and and you know it's it's up to you if you want to keep going up down or 
you know, it, it happens. It happens to all of us. And the, the faster it gets to happen to you, the faster you will learn. So I, I always tell them, listen, pick and choose something you can f, you know, that you can mess up immediately, <laughs> and give it a shot, and and then you will know. Or you know, try it, try it, you know, try something harder. You know, test yourself, challenge yourself. And if you if you you like that, you you are willing to you know to challenge yourself a little more. Keep going, and then you will learn. You will you will know if you are right. You are the right path, because it's it's not for everybody. <laughs> it's not it's not for everybody. Um, but um, it's it's yeah, yes. I mean, we can keep talking about this. It's insane. Uh, well, okay. What else? What else was going to ask you? Um, so your hopes. You kind of talked about it. your hopes and dreams or about this book is that people take it and and become an entrepreneur or is is or you are or how do you how do you deal with this book i mean do you just you're, you're selling the book or are you have any interactions with people after they buy the book um yeah i mean we uh we have been running curriculum around this book for the past um because we did a lot of testing around the curriculum that's within cool. the, you know, there the pieces that are within this book and then we've created a curriculum around that so we've been running that for the past um uh, about 18 months we've been testing that curriculum uh, we are now um, we are now going into organizations and using some of these tools such as the baseboard um, to help replace um, the business model canvas because it's a little more robust uh, it's a, a tool the canvas was great when it came out 10 years ago but we're now iterating faster and innovation has accelerated so we need something that can um, that can really hold up to those challenges, but is also ro more robust. So we're heading into uh, organizations and teaching them uh, about that and workshops around that. And then um, I'm in the midst of putting together two Udemy courses around pieces of this, and then um, also working on um, an accelerator as well um, with some online components. So uh, using a lot of this stuff to also just build up the curriculum so that you know, people may want a little more depth into each of these topics, and we're going to give it to them. Well, that sounds very cool. That sounds very cool and very advanced, um, at least from where I'm sitting. <laughs> um, because I, 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 for a fact, know that, I mean, there's a lot of information out there, you know, all over the place, and a lot of stuff is not very uh, clear to first-time entrepreneurs, or even second ones. I mean, uh it's it's still very you know you know very murky <laughs> um but yeah well i don't know if, if there's any i mean yeah i was gonna ask you something else do you have a motto a motto yeah oh, um i say to my students because i'm a professor as well um what do I tell them? Oh, I'm so used to just saying it that I don't think about saying it. So, <laughs> so I usually I usually end class with um, "Have a great day, um, be awesome, and inspire others." And I, I guess honestly, I guess that's sort of my motto because at the end of the day, if we're not being awesome, and if we're not oh, having yeah. a good day, and if we're not inspiring others, then what the hell are we doing? What the hell are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> now you previously had other businesses. How many? Because I mentioned in the beginning you're a serial entrepreneur. So what else? What, what other businesses do you have? Yeah. So my first career was as an opera singer. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Um, <laughs> uh, but that the um, the market the market tanked and I lost all of my gigs uh, all within like a month period. But at that same time, I was starting Wild Women Entrepreneurs, which was a women's organization I was telling you about. Um, and I started that with $100. I grew it to 55 chapters in seven countries in less than nine months. Had no idea what I was doing, by the way. Um, made a lot of mistakes. But learned from every single one of them. Um, and after that, because uh, I was, I growth hacked it. And people wanted to know, how did you, you know, build something from nothing or bootstrap? Um, and so, um, my consulting company, which I still have, uh, sort of sparked up from there and that consulting company, uh, we're rebranding, um, into what is called the revolution Institute. And we're focused on, um, we're really focused on being almost like this pop-up Institute so that we focus on 
uh, economic development in secondary cities that really need it, but then really testing out programs like this curriculum or, you know, how do you put together a, um, a pop-up, um, you know, a pop-up shop program for a city so that you build up its, um, its downtown again, things like that is really, and then research is, uh, those are the things where we're spending a lot of our time. So. Awesome. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was, uh, I was interviewed recently, two, about two weeks ago, about uh, reinvention. <laughs> um, and you mentioned opera singer right now. It's like, okay, so she's she's definitely been you know reinventing. Because <laughs> I would I would never get have guessed. You know, I've I've I, I produced and acted in a movie. Oh, did you? Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> when you know, uh, you know, people. I never. I mean, it's not like I'm talking about those things all the time, but. If somebody asks me, it's kind of, you know, something in my head has a connection to that. I'll tell them, listen, I made a movie and I didn't know why it was, the I mean, I knew I wanted to make a movie at some point. You know, I like storytelling. Yeah. So I said, my buddy's a director. He wants to make his first movie. So listen, talk about learning. If you're going to, you know, mess something up, mess up somebody else's project and learn from that <laughs> and then act on it, act, act in it. <laughs> and then you, you, <laughs> you take it as personal. And that's how you do it. But I said, listen, nobody said we were going to win an Oscar. That's not what it's about. It's about having fun and learning. And then, you know, when you, you, you start learning from these things and then also experimenting with, with new technologies, then you start, you know, use that for your next experience. But, a lot, you know, as we were saying, a lot of people think it's like a straight line. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's definitely not. It's, uh, it's, it's not a linear path, we'll say. But no, well, it's great. I love it. Um, you know, my my husband has done film, and uh, and I've done film, and yeah, no, it's uh, it's fun, and it's good to learn. You know, allow yourself to have those projects and to learn, and just much like it sounds like you were doing. You know, allow yourself to just have fun with it because if you're not having fun, yeah, you're doing, right, yeah. Listen, when people tell me that I'm all over the damn place, I say with a purpose <laughs> because it's multitasking with a purpose. There you because go. It's not like that's a full time job or anything. Like that. It's more like you do it as a hobby. You learn from that. You experience that. You learn something new, some new skills. You bring those skills into what you're doing. You know, you replicate, you, you recycle, and then you learn new stuff. You you evolve, and uh, but yeah, that's that's really what how it goes. Awesome. Um, well, Janae, thank you so much for you know for being on the podcast. Um, I I know we could go on and on and on. Um, you know, where can people find you? Oh, um, if people want more information, they can go to www.startupequation.com. Uh, they want to go check out the book. They can go check out some reviews on Amazon. And if they want to connect with me, feel free to connect with me on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram at The Sun Queen. And thanks for having me on, Jorge. Why, why the Sun Queen? <laughs> oh, that's a story in itself. Oh, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> oh my God! I was like, I was podcast. I was like, I was gonna ask her about the Sun Queen. I, I didn't write it down. <laughs> I was like, okay, the Sun Queen. That sounds like a funny, like a funny, like a funny story. <laughs> it, it, it was, and it just sort of. All right, so really quickly. Um, so I was I was speaking at a uh, at a marketing to women conference, and this was years ago, by the way, um, and. The doors open. This guy walked walked through, and you know, I was. It looked like I was sort of walking straight towards him, and he came running up to me, and he said, "The way the light is hitting your hair, it's almost like you have this halo. You look like the queen. You look like the queen of the sun." And I'm like, "Thanks." <laughs> I didn't know this guy at all. Um, and then because I kept seeing him, he kept mentioning it to other people to the point where uh, when we were having lunch at this conference, you know, people always get together and have lunch. Well, everyone started calling me the Sun Queen. And so by the end of the conference, I was known and was introduced Sun as Queen. the Sun Queen. So <laughs> it, uh, it stuck with me ever since. And I figured, hey, it's a good that's, story, so I'll keep it. That's, that's viral for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's only <laughs> viral. Outstanding. All right, Janae, I'll let you go then. We got, right. we got we got the story now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Janae, have a good one. All right, take care. You too.